Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program to Oblivion and Beyond. I've just installed the ScanSat module thing so I can do like mapping and stuff because I think that would be quite useful. So uh, that was done on uh, a bit of science that I've already purchased. So I went through and purchased that. So we've got the uh, radar thing. Yeah, that's the best way we can do it. But that also means that I need to uh, redesign my science module because there's lots of other things that need to go on it now. Like, for instance, this. That that needs to go there. Um, we also need to put uh, ketane on top and the materials bay underneath. Ugh. Uh, and for the well-rounded scientific experiments, we need the goo canister as well. Booyah job done. Uh, it's looking good so far, we need some parachutes and uh, next we're going to need a propulsion system. Double the parachutes up here because I do keep breaking stuff and keeping breaking stuff is not getting science back home. Anyway, with that rather important observation made, we're going to uh, just check all this stuff out quickly. We need propulsion, so we need a fuel source and an engine. Uh, I don't think, like, as this is just the flying around in space module, all we're going to need is a small fuel pod and uh, this tiny, I want. I keep wanting to call this one the poodle, but it's not, it's just a tiny uh, cell V150 or something like that. Um, so we're going to name this ship uh, Spits from a High, Dis high Vantage. Um, I, I'm not sure why we're going to call it that, it just seemed like uh, you know, the, the right sort of name to give it. And now we're going to make something to just put this in orbit. Our plan today, wow look at that, a full like nearly two minutes in. Our plan today is just to test out this ScanSat. Um, I, I, I've not really used it properly before and I, I do feel like it would be quite nice to, to have a full uh, full working knowledge of how it works before I send it out to, as I said last time, Minmus. Um, so yeah, I, I reckon we're going to need to work on a, a quite a compact launcher here. Really, I'm, I'm going down for uh, a, a tri-split system. It until I get asparagus, I, I feel this is kind of the best power-to-weight ratio idea here. Uh, I, sizing up engines to be used uh, basically these outside ones want to have more power with less efficiency because they're just they're getting me out of the atmosphere uh, whereas the middle one wants to be as efficient as possible uh, and then we're going to strap these three um, three boosters in between those so it's yeah so so we've got some booster rockets and that is in essence the basic design of what I'm going to be building for this lifter here uh, four liquid engines and three solid boosters should just about get me up into a low orbit I'm not looking to, to take us all the way somewhere else um, so with the basics in mind we're going to put things like solar panels on as we now have them and that means we can have like constant torque control and we're also going to put some lighting on so that we can see what's going on it's very important that we see what's going on um, because I, I'm fed up of um, producing like blank videos and not really being able to describe what's going on because it's just a black mess. Uh, so I opened up the lights to see where they were going and I was like, of course, we can set around with the RPG RPG settings here, um, which I think is one of the best things that they've, they've actually been able to do to upgrade this. Uh, anyway, I, I'm going to spend a lot of time playing around with the colours here, but what I actually do is just settle on this colour because I think it looks really nice. So we take this beast of advanced engineering outside and I do consider making it daytime but that would waste this beautiful blue light that I've put in here. So we're just going to take off like this. Now I have made uh, a singular mistake with the lighting. You'll notice that it's attached to my outside booster, well not the outside boosters, the, the second stage liquid fueled boosters. Uh, the ones that I'm not about to drop right now, but it will in fact drop on the next stage, which means that I'm going to end up without some light at some point that is no real um, impact upon the actual mission schedule here uh, it just just mean it's just a little bit disappointing I, I, I don't know why I did that what I should do is just throw a few girders out of the side and then put lights on the end of the girders so we have like beautiful lighting at a distance without really impacting so much, well without having to drop it so much but anyway we're flying up in our normal trajectory um, Apoapsis is already like well out of the atmosphere hundreds of hundreds of kilometers so I lean over and push my nose straight down towards the uh, horizon 
perform my second staging and now we're just looking at rocket flare oh and my mouse pointer of course uh perhaps we'll uh, fast forward it to a bit where there's a little more little more going on okay so uh at this point we are half an hour into the mission i've not spent half an hour doing this obviously i've used time warp and stuff to to get us this far in um and uh, we are testing just the, the the basic use of this um radar scanner what i want, really want to know is how high uh, in orbit these things will work we're both uh, both my instruments obviously because they're on the same craft are at 200 kilometers up at the moment give or take just over to see if 200 was the uh, the ceiling or not it turns out for key thing yes um, for the radar no so with our results logged down for the 200 kilometer tests um, I should hopefully be very soon maybe now go on uh sorting out my my uh apoapsis up to uh 300 just over 300 um kilometers as well you know uh, I, I want to test each individual um 100 kilometers or so to, just so i can get the widest range on my maps uh yeah which is going to leave me not a great deal to talk about uh, in this particular episode which might mean this will be a very short episode who knows, we'll find out as I edit it further. So we're just passing over the 250 kilometer mark here and I've noticed that something strange with my sounds. If you notice, right there where my mouse is wiggling, we stopped, uh, stopped taking up Keithane uh, signals, which means 250 kilometers, who'd have thought it, that's the, that's the Keithane limit. Um, so we'll, we'll swing round and we'll boost up on our periapsis next to test up even higher. After completing a few orbital manoeuvres, uh, I managed to completely eat through the fuel on this uh, second stage, causing me to need to jettison it. But of course this does mean that I have less mass to be dragging around with me in this orbit, so any sort of corrections that I'll be needing to make will be uh, a lot simpler, which is good, because as we're just coming up to the 400 meter mark, I'm like, ah, that works. Wait, how am I going to know if it works or not if this map stays there? when um when it's unpowered or when it's not collecting any data as it may very well do so what i'm going to do is actually uh point my nose down towards the south pole and incline my orbit a little bit so we're doing uh new passes on the map because you know, we we need to find out or so was my thinking at the time but after a couple of orbits i'm like ah, i'm a little bit bored of this now it obviously works i know what i'm doing let's just go home uh, i can see the flag on my uh on my radar i suppose it's, it's not really my radar my, my map readout and uh yeah i'm gonna just bring bring me home as safe and as close as possible so with my trajectory set we're just gonna come out into uh the staging view which i always like to think of as the main view and just run through a few of the the basic sciences i know i'm not gonna get much science uh just doing it in orbit in curb in orbit again i like we've done done curb in orbit quite a bit but every little helps as tesco says and we're gonna get as many as much little bits of science as we possibly can because anything else would just be a bit of a waste uh including this crew report which does absolutely nothing for us it turns out so i'm gonna stop my radar altimeter and we're gonna come screaming in at a rate of knots uh by rate of knots i do of course mean uh two and a bit kilometers per second which is quite a quite a speed to be going around a planet that's a tenth of the size of the earth um some would even say it's comparable to going 20 kilometers a second around the earth but yeah you know maths doesn't work like that really right <laughs> So the last look on the uh, map view told me that my blue line was going straight over the top of the Kerbal Space Center. Now it turns out that that is a bit of an issue because that blue line is not hair thin. It's actually quite a thick bar and going straight over the top of it with quite a thick bar actually can, can lead you to be quite a way um, off target. Um, and of course the, my inclination burn halfway through this, uh, this this particular mission that I at, at no point even made any sort of attempt to correct has thrown me out quite a f quite a far way. You will notice there uh, the, the the flag YOY um, indicating that we we're, we're not we're not a million miles away. Um, indeed, we're we're not even a million kilometers away. We are incredibly close. We're we're only 22 kilometers away from the floor and I'm going to say, ooh, what, about 15 kilometers away from that flag? 
so maybe 30 kilometers away from the space base which is quite nice anyway parachutes deploy nicely uh, I can feel the drag affecting my, my vessel and it really does seem like I'm gonna come down safely which will be a first for this particular series I'll point out um, so far we've always managed to blow at least one piece of our spaceship up upon impact um, uh, they, they have so far been just impact so I don't think we can really call anything a landing so far um, but here we go ready we're going to be a lot further away from the floor than we realized when we changed the camera angle Aha. no we're gonna hit the floor and it all rolls around fine we've, we've had no explosions we've had no problems I'm gonna rock, rock the vessel around a bit a little bit so I can get get good old Jeb out there uh, we're going to take a surface sample, we're probably not going to plant a flag because this is not where the mission went to, it was just, you know, a, a, a landing point. Um, so that's more science claimed and uh, with that I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure guys. Uh, I will see you next time when I promise we're going to Minmus, we're, we're going to send a satellite up there first and then we're going to get people back. Bye!